targets you guys, Dennis? Uh, so Next on America is in California, El Segundo specifically, and so that's sort of the area um, we're at, where I live. Okay, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, and you're still um like working from home. You still manage to do that for for what you do. Yeah, um, we've started our company. You know, all of Next on America is working from home at the moment, and. You know, it's, it's been pretty fortunate that we were able to transition to work from home pretty easily. Yep. Um, a lot of work that we do, you know, is on the computer, talking to people, talking to our counterparts in Korea over, you know, Skype and Zoom and all that stuff already. So, you know, it wasn't too difficult to sort of transition to this work from home situation. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, um, I mean, it's not something you want to tap on, but I mean, it seems to be the biggest thing in the world at the moment, this, this COVID stuff. So... But um, in yep. saying that, what, what, how do you reckon um, COVID's affecting the, the game industry as a whole? Like, are you seeing from where you are, do you, is there anything you're seeing, so upturn, downturn in, in different areas? Or, you know, we, we discussed this quite heavily on our end, just trying to yeah, get our heads around yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, I think it's still a little bit too early to see all the effects. Uh, you know, we're trying to um analyze that ourselves you know some of the games um you know we're working on have seen a, a little bit more players some of the games have it um but you know some of those games that saw more players had big updates you know so it's really difficult to tell what sort of effect it, it has but just in terms of you know the work right like i said before um for car riders specifically you know um we've been sort of business as scheduled um our dates haven't moved or anything so we've been sort of just plugging along um no real impact on our work yeah that's, that's good i suppose video games like my i do the the mku um that's kind of you know it's always been a sideline gig for myself and lance the other co-founder and then we've got uh, what is it six or seven reviewers and, and whatnot and content creators and it's always been kind of sidelined where full-time gig is it mm -hmm. Same sort of thing, yeah. We're, we're, we're lucky that it's an industry we can, you know, work from home with. But um, uh, yeah. with uh, Cartwrighter, now, obviously, you're the producer there. And um, mm -hmm. so what how, – how's that going? Like, what sort of level of input do you get as a producer? And, and um, uh, you know, what – you know, do your ideas get thrown in, into the, the actual uh, development process or – um, what exactly does the producer do? Uh, yeah, so, you know, as a publishing producer, um, we, my, me specifically, you know, for this game, I sort of oversee, um, like, the marketing, PR, community, um, CS, customer support, all those different publishing efforts um, to try to bring the game to market um, and also help support it once it's live. Um, so we're a little bit removed from the developer. Um, our developers are in Korea. Um, so we're not as close as maybe like a de development producer. Um, but um, because we, you know, sort of have that broad um, oversight into a bunch of different other areas of the game, we have a we have a broader picture, right, of the market and the audience. Yep. So for this game specifically, you know, um, because it's a game that's based on uh, a game that was already released in China, you know, Car Rider Rush Plus was already released in China. We're bringing it globally. You know, we took a we took a look at that Chinese game, for example, and tried to analyze it, all the data that's coming out of it, um, the gameplay, um, the artwork, and tried to see, okay, what do we need to do to sort of adapt this um, for our people in the U.S., Europe, Australia, everywhere around the world where it's not there yet. Um, what sort of changes should we make? Um, to be successful. That's sort of where our input, um, our expertise comes in. And that's um, what we provide to the developer um, suggestions on how to sort of tweak things. Oh, okay, yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, uh, look, I've been, I guess, working in the industries, like gaming industry since 2011. And that, even that probably shows yeah. a little bit of my ignorance in terms of the producing side. You know, like you say, you're talking about, um, you know, you got your, um, you know, development producer versus the publisher mm -hmm. producer. So yeah, um, so that's actually very interesting for for me to to get that yeah. understanding too, and that that difference between the two. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and look, 
being that that producer is this what what's it like being a producer you know for for these games for you know to be able to be involved and is it something you fell into work towards or just mm-hmm. just happened uh well i mean being a producer it's it's really it's really interesting um i sort of like it because every single day is really different um you know for example on carreta rush you know one day i'm overseeing a voiceover session um next day i'm organizing an internal play test you know getting people builds of the game gathering their feedback day after that i might be reviewing some game design documents and you know like i mentioned earlier providing suggestions to the dev team and working with them um to sort of tweak things in the game. So it's really we 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 wear a lot of hats, you know, and that's sort of what being a publishing producer is like. Um, you know, we're not we're not the ones <laughs> I like I like to say this sort of flippantly, but we're not the ones doing anything really. Like I don't develop the game. Yep. I don't do the PR that Cynthia does, you know, I don't market the game. I don't talk to our players uh, daily like our community manager does. But what I do is make sure that they can do their job and do their job well, right? Um, so I help them succeed. I remove any blockers that they have um, and sort of try to see where in the process we can sort of improve um, how we do things. Um, honestly, when I when I first started my career in the video game industry, I didn't even know this role existed. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think I went to school to be a programmer and, you know, I my typical my career path was sort of typical for most people in the industry i started just testing games you know playing games 8 and 12 16 hours a day finding bugs and then from there i sort of just learned about all the different aspects of video game production video game publishing and just sort of you know was able to move into this position yeah right and kind of uh in, in terms of the playing the games, uh, it just made me think of a, a, a question. Um, for me, when mm-hmm. when, when, I, when I started just doing reviews and whatnot, it all seemed great. It seemed like, a, you know, like you say, you play games, sit down and play games for for your job effectively. Did you, right. what, what's your thoughts on, uh, you know, touching on that, the enjoyment? Does it, did, did that take any of the enjoyment of playing the games, like on a personal level? Like, because it becomes something that you're then doing to, for your job, basically. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. How, did, how did you find that? Uh, yeah, I'm just on a personal level. Yeah, I mean, for me specifically, you know, uh, I've been playing games my entire life and I've always saw myself in this industry. And I think playing games and um, as a job um, gave me a better understanding and a better respect for the games that I was playing, yeah. you know? Um, even even games that I was working on, you know, I'd be testing the same game for eight hours a day and then I'd come home and still wanna play it because now I understand, okay, all the work that went into this one level or all the work that went, went into this one animation, it's it sort of impresses me and gave me a level of respect for the industry and made me want to continue working in it um, to to help it succeed basically. So it didn't really diminish the enjoyment for me. Um, I still love playing games and maybe even love playing games more than ever because of what I was able to see behind the scenes. A high level of respect as well, yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, yeah uh, it's, even for me, and you know, uh, I would never have played games, believe it or not, like Maple Story. That was, mm. you know, I would never have played a game like that. And it was, you know, I found it quite strange that I enjoyed when I had that to play here. So, because uh, it was just not something that would normally play. But with that, yeah, and, yeah. Um, and look, you touched on just before, bringing games to market to, I guess, the US and all that from, you know, the, the, the China um, market. Is that a difficult thing to try and try and do? Because, like you say, um, uh, you know, you got the cart rider that's you know originated there, mm-hmm. and now you you got to bring it to market over here. Is there is there many changes involved in in doing that? Um, yeah, I think um, yeah, it 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 depends on the game and where it starts from. You know, um, cart rider specifically. You know, this IP um, originally started in Korea, right? Um, so with Nexon. It was one of the first IPs, one of the first games, you know, that they released. 
Um, and so the game that was made, um, the mobile game that, you know, we're releasing based on that Chinese mobile game, um, took a lot of inspiration from Cartwrighter itself, from the old PC games, um, from the PC games and mobile games that were already released here. And we sort of just refined it, you know, updated it for, for, uh, today's modern climate basically. And the technology that we now have. You know, updated graphics, um, new modes, new mobile specific features, all these things, um, I think we're already there from the mobile game that China released. And so it wasn't really too difficult, um, to be honest, to adapt that to global markets. Um, you know, it was just little things that we did here and there. Um, can't really get into too specifics about everything, but it's stuff like animations or, you know, hey, maybe, you um, you know, for the global market, for the U.S., let's uh, create this type of pet or this type of costume. You know, it's little things like that, little tweaks here and there just to make it a little bit more appealing. Oh, yeah, right. And uh, obviously, Kart Rider, I guess a lot of people would look at it and go, ah, Mario Kart knockoff. You know, right. what do you think about right. that? I mean, it, it look, it, it's easy at first glance. I mean, it's even, you know, it's got Kart in the name as well. Um what, what do you think when people say that, like kind of throwing a curveball at you there? Uh, I mean, to be honest, you know, Mario Kart is a hugely successful franchise. So, you know, we're, we're lucky to even be in the same breath as them, right? Um, but I think with the, recent re <laughs> with the recent release of Mario Kart Tour, I think, you know, it sort of showed that there is an appetite for mobile kart racing games, right? People... Um, you know, people responded a lot, po really positively, positively to that game. Um, and I think we bring a little, something a little bit different, right? And that's what we're trying to show. Um, you know, there's a, there's a lot more depth in Car Rider Rush. Um, there's a whole esports component. There's um, really deep controls there, but there's also an accessibility um, and a level of customization that um, even games like Mario Kart doesn't have, right? You know, you can customize your characters, you could customize little decals on your cart. There's different game modes, there's item modes, there's speed modes, there's a story mode. You know, there's all this, um, all these features and all these content, all this content in the game um, that we think sets us apart. Yeah, well, yeah, that's right. None of that is there in Mario Kart. It's pick a character, pick a cart and race. That's pretty much the end of it. Right. So, um, right. but yeah, and, and releasing on like mobile, now, how, the mobile market, that's obviously, it's, it's, it's been up and down, I think, over the years. Um, and now, probably more than ever, it's probably on its way up just due to the, the climate of the world. But how's that going? Is that um, you, you see more projects being released on mobile? Or, you know, is, is it something that, yeah, is going to become a focus moving forward? I think um, the reason the reason we're seeing sort of an uptick um, and an increased um, number of games and projects on mobile right now is just due to the advancement of the technology, right? Um, mobile mobile phones now are just as powerful and can run, you know, just as beautiful games as you can have on console and PC. So um, I think we're really starting to starting to see the beginnings of that. Uh, uh, there's a lot, for example, like in the Asian market, you know, MMORPGs are very popular right now. Um, and you're just starting to see that here in the Western market. Um, I don't think we've seen sort of a really successful version of that yet, but you know, we probably will in the next year or two. Um, and that's what we're trying to do with Cartwriter, um, right? Um, because it's based on an older IP, you know, we wanted to show um, the level of polish and the level of uh, graphics that this game can achieve uh, on mobile, and so that's why you know we wanted to bring it to a wider audience. Yeah, and I I haven't looked, but what about uh, gamepad controls for the mobile? Is it on there? So we don't. We are not actively um, you know supporting any compatibility tests with. Um, Game pads. Uh, not to say that it may not work, but we just aren't really focusing not on that actively, right now. Not actively, yeah, yeah. No, that's fair enough too. Yeah. Um, so I mean, part of part. So just to just to uh, elaborate on that, um, part of the reason is because you know we want this game to be sort of a competitive game, right? Um, and yeah, 
and not and so we want to let we need we need to keep sort of the playing field level between all players um and so that's why you know um we're focusing mainly on the touch controls on the mobile devices so that way you can't you you can't blame the device you can you blame the uh control of the person as they you know. <laughs> exactly so, yeah user error <laughs> um, yeah no that's um that's a fair call too. It's it's like crossplay now. You know, you got PCs cross playing with consoles. Right. You know, if you're on a PC playing first person, yeah, I can see where that and the esports component is there too, as you say. So, but yeah, so exactly. Um, I mean, you know, can't write it. It's it's yeah, it's it's got a cult following too over in, in China, and that should, you know, it's these sorts of games do. I think they gain massive, massive followings over here too. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, look. I know that uh, we're pretty much out of time, um, but there is one question I ask everybody, um, and I almost seem hesitant to ask it in this time because I haven't had an interview while COVID's been around, but anyway. <laughs> so, um, Jen, the question is, the zombie apocalypse is coming. It's here, it's, you know, it's upon us. What is your weapon of yeah. choice in that apocalypse? <laughs> Um, actually, before I answer that question, I, I wanted to, um, you know, go back to, you mentioned Cartwrighter um, having a big following and could have a big following here. Uh, and I, uh, sorry, it just stuck in my mind as right? you were talking that um, it's, it definitely, we're, we're definitely surprised at the response that we've been getting with this game specifically since we announced, since we did the pre-registration um, tons of people have sort of nostalgia for this game. Uh, There's three million because they played the old pre-registration. Yeah, we actually reached three million pre-registrations in less than a week, um, and a lot of comments that we've been getting, you know, on social, on Discord, you know, have been like, "Oh my God, I can't believe this game is back!" Um, so we're really excited to see that sort of cult following come out of the woodwork. Um, we're actually surprised by it, to be honest. <laughs> and so we definitely see a bright future for this game. And yeah, it, it's um, fantastic. And a lot, a lot of those, uh, I actually see in the industry a lot of those Chinese, that those sorts of games that come from that part of the world do bring their uh, cult status with them. Yeah, yeah. Because there's a lot of people that sort of follow those games and want to see it here and are excited when we finally bring it out globally. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so zombie apocalypse give me, question. Give me your uh, choice. Oof, and and then I'll tough. tell you one of the best uh, ones I've had after that. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, I do, I do consume a lot of zombie apocalypse media. Um, but I think uh, my weapon of choice will probably be some sort of melee weapon. Because uh, then you don't have to deal with ammo, right? You don't have to deal with, you know, running out of... Um, ammunition to shoot zombies or whatever yep so maybe, so maybe like a i don't know like a hammer like a small hammer of some sort uh probably not a sledgehammer it's too heavy you get gets tired pretty quick. easily <laughs> yeah. yeah but uh definitely not something sharp because then you know you don't have to maintain it you don't have to keep it sharp you don't have to you know i'll sort of stop in the middle of what you're doing so i'll probably say something like a hammer yeah right yeah no, that's fair enough i um no, I just you know, get my list together. So when the zombie apocalypse comes, you know, I know who my the team with the best weapons are. But, uh, <laughs> but hey, one of the one of the funniest. Did I did I make your list? <laughs> yeah, one of the funniest ones was a freezer full of uh, frozen pizza. And okay, and, and, and yeah. not to use as a weapon, as they described me, but to hide in the corner and have food until it all passes over. <laughs> oh, that's, that's another way that's of looking definitely at it, one you know, outside the box. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, people have their own chat. I like it. I like it. <laughs> but look, I um, I appreciate you taking the time out. I know it's um, there's lots to do, and you, your time would be you'd be getting pulled from one end to the other. Um, and look, yeah, yeah. Uh, no. Look, Cart Rider Rush looks, yeah, it, yeah, it looks like one of those fun games, and and the fact that it does have that following, the the you know, it's it's got the esport component. Um, it's mobile. It, look, it covers all. It ticks all the right boxes. At the end of the day, uh, yeah. you know, so but yeah, we just look forward to seeing what what else is next. Awesome. awesome. Yep. Um, yeah. Right now, you know, we're sort of focusing on global launch. Uh, it's definitely soon. Don't have a date yet, um, but it's going to be sometime in the first half of 2020 here. So yep. we're just all hands on deck for that. Yep. 
No, that's great, mate. Look forward to it. So we'll um we'll get our hands on it. We'll I'm sure that Mitch will hook us up with a, a copy to to give it a go once um once uh and we'll give, we'll give you our opinion. It's always good, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> <Perfect>. <laughs> All right, sounds mate. good, man. Thanks heaps for your time.